So let's take a look at our applicant, Bryant McCullough from Flower Mound, Texas, Flower Mound High School. So it doesn't seem like he has any noticeable disadvantages or it's not from a marginalized community, wealthy, uh, college educated family, you know, comes from the suburbs. So there's nothing here that indicates any sort of hardship or special circumstances. This is a student applicant to aerospace engineering first choice. Academically, he's obviously done pretty well. He's in the top 15% of his school, scored almost perfect on the ACT and of course the math. His academic index score is pretty high. Um, his test score is probably slightly above average for the typical engineering applicants, slightly maybe below average uh, class rank wise. This is a student whose review file will definitely determine their admission to UT. Their academics aren't strong enough to get them in is based um, on their rank and test scores. So we know that the students with expanded resume also apply to honors. They have a pretty strong senior course schedule have already completed both calculus AB and BC. So when we're talking fit for engineering, they're, they're taking you know, the most advanced math and science courses available. They've also got a good offering of the, the social science humanities classes as well. Let's take a look at the extracurricular activities. So of course, the first thing that jumps out is band. He lists this as his first activity. Uh, you can see an immediate progression from, you know, starting up pretty high, third chair, going to lead oboe as a sophomore, and then promoted or elected a section leader and then drum major, which is always kind of the top two or three students in a, in a high school's band. They've obviously dedicated a lot of time, both before school and after school on the weekends. You know, admissions reviewers, we see a lot of applicants who have experience with band, and, you know, we recognize that this is a highly involved activity. I think some students may feel like they're slided if they do band because it isn't kind of seen as as rigorous, but certainly, you know, we're taught during our trainings to have an appreciation for these students, especially ones who have, who have achieved at a very high level. Let's see what else we have. So we have Math Honor Society. So he's a vice president and he's committed some time. Uh, obviously that would help for his fit for engineering. So he has these honor societies. You know, these don't add a whole lot to his application, but it's nice to see kind of rounds out like he's done a little bit of service volunteering work. Again, we see that here through the volunteering hours. Not, not a ton, but again, it's, you know, he has a deep commitment to one activity. He has that math club leadership position. And, and obviously with band, is, it seems like a pretty deep commitment. So let's see what else we have. Okay, so we have a lot more information here. So he's all state UIL bands. So this means he's, he's pretty much achieved at the highest level. He's uh, kind of committed as much as he can to that activity and, you know, you know, not more, much more could be expected. And so just, just on that basis alone, you know, this student's looking at a, you know, a low, low four, maybe, maybe a high, some reviewers might see him as a high three right now, but um, let's take a look at the essays and see if we have any evidence to elevate him to a five or perhaps even a six. So just immediately, right, so this, this essay starts off pretty entertaining. Band students flock together like birds of a feather. We floater to school way too early for sectionals, and we dedicate crazy hours for marching. Though each of us flies on our own path, we set aside our individuality, harmonize with the group. So we can immediately say he's, he's constructing a metaphor here. Starts off with a good introduction. Kind of sets the tone for the rest of his essay. You know, he's, he's getting pretty clever with the hyperboles and puns. Fortunate to have nested the past seven years in a community that soars like ducks forming a perfect V. So we're getting a lot of good visual, illustrative language here. So let's see if he further develops his ideas. So we saw for his extracurriculars, he kind of he started band at a high level and he, and he maximized his commitment. But, it, you know, according to this essay, these first few paragraphs indicates that it wasn't always the case. He wasn't always musically inclined or instru you know, talented with instruments. Um, but again, he continues this metaphor pretty, pretty heavily throughout 11-year-old me wondered how sounding like a dying goose could help me with my true interest, math and science. So he kind of introduces some nuance, and, and it's not one of these tales of everything is super positive and he was a natural, but in fact, it sounds like something he really had to work hard at, you know, being promoted from higher chairs. I'm talking about how he had to earn, earn the respect of his, uh, of his peers and that, that his commitment in band allowed him to take academics more seriously. So, you know, if we had access to his transcript, we might see that he you know, developed, you know, more academically from freshman to junior year. Talks about how it became a more central role in his life. It continues again with a the metaphor. There's always one feather that requires plucking. So we've got some nice 
you know, metaphorical language for perfection, for overcoming, you know, adversity, success with community or routine, thanks to our unflagging determination. Once, despite feeling like a dead duck, I powered through a marching competition following a concussion. So again, we're learning a lot more about, about his commitment to band and recognize that there's hundreds of students that are going to be writing about band, but this, you know, essay, even just halfway through is, is setting itself apart from other essays about band. So we learn more about his team competitions and, and how on an individual level, he wasn't always in the band, but then, you know, he talks about even as a team, when he first got there, they weren't too organized, you know, a really colorful analogy. We seem to march like quail scattering from buckshot reflected in our poor rankings. Again, really, you know, utilizing all these rhetorical elements you learn in your English, English language AP class, hyperbole, metaphors, puns, you know, he's got, he's got some good, you know, even some paradox in here. Consider us the bald eagles of the band kingdom. It's a nice hyperbole. And then he says how, you know, was, you know, him amongst a, a lot of his other teammates, you know, the ranking one of the best marching bands in the country. So we learn more that it's not just that he's at UIL State, but in fact, uh, they've, they've competed well at national competitions. You know, he even changed instruments at one point, received a spot in Texas All-State. So, you know, again, this is, this is a great essay. So let's read the conclusion here. Every fall season comes with a new marching band show to coup about. My band show this year is about birds. So this isn't just kind of like some zany off the wall, you know, topic, but he's obviously being quite clever. He's being creative, fully developing his ideas. His content is extremely organized. I mean, this SAA has pretty much everything you could, you could ask for. You know, he makes larger connections between his experience in band and his performance in the classroom. You know, he looks in a very nuanced way about his individual growth, his growth as a, as a team member and, and, and their marching band as a whole. You know, even concludes with a nice sentiment about mentorship um, and passing the torch off to the to the next group of leaders in his band. And so, you know, truly, if this is a if you were to put a thousand SAAs into a pile, this is going to be, you know, one or two of the top, you know, top essays that a reviewer is going to see, especially as it comes to band. Again, this is this doesn't get much better than this. So, you know, just based on that essay alone, you know, a reviewer could, could re reward this student, you know, solidly with a four, but definitely even with a five. You know, this is a highly entertaining. Um, but still very mature and thoughtful essay. Let's look at essay C and, and look, look, look what approach that uh, Bryant takes here. Again, we have another kind of uh, thought-provoking, attention-getting introduction. You know, he starts talking about the Tower of Babel and Dubai's Burj Khalifa and George Mallory, the first explorer to climb Mount Everest, and, you know, Build, builds and develops on this idea a little bit more, you know, this notion, this human notion of wanting to pursue greatness and embracing challenge. You know, these are these are things that are in the University of Texas's, you know, vision statements about are you someone who embraces a challenge and barking into the unknown? You know, this is conjuring up visions of, of research and pushing the envelope for, for science and exploration. Again, continues on this theme of, of human exploration, not just as a, a concept of of climbing heights, but even like, you know, you know, jumping out from space, you know, the famous skydiver Felix Bumgarner at one point had the highest skydive ever. And then he kind of, you know, immediately gets to the point, I feel compelled to journey not just outside the earth, but beyond the moon, I must go to Mars. So we know that this will be an essay about space exploration. Again, tying the analogy back here, so this metaphor about reaching to the heavens is coming through the ancient Babylonians reached towards with their fabled tower and entire world above ours. Talking about how Mars is our closest neighbor, it's surprised there hasn't been a greater, greater push to finish what the Babylonians started. So this is an extremely rich metaphor. You know, he's, he's really kind of unpacking this introduction a lot more, and, and these themes are continuing to come through. You can tell there's not a sentence here that's wasted. Everything belongs. It ties back to these larger themes. So he says, you know, there's this idealistic notion going to the red planet, but unfortunately we have some problems. And he says we've kind of been to Mars with rovers, but it's just extremely expensive to get there and that just literally putting things into space is, is highly problematic. So he kind of brings things back down to earth, literally and metaphorically. And he, he identifies a few different challenges to exploring Mars, colonizing Mars. And these are presumably things that he wants to, you know, problems he wants to help solve both in, in his education and his career. While the climate ahead is difficult and the reward at the summit, nothing but a cold wasteland, lifting our space flight technology to greater levels and taking people to destinations like Mars remains my dream. So again, very straight to the point. So the this metaphor of heaven is 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 a little a little more subtle, a little more nuanced. You don't have the use of puns and hyperboles like you do in the first essay. But again, this is a highly rich, complex essay that's kind of interesting in a 
in an objective way. And of course, a, a, an exceptional essay in terms of um, undergraduate compared to other undergraduate applicants. And he even has a little, little bit more nuance, not just I want to go to Mars, but he says, you know, if I'm not the one to set foot, then maybe I can help people contribute to this larger mission. Unlike Earth, there is no tallest peak in the universe. So again, tying back to George Mallory. Hopefully, you know, Mars is just the beginning. So this is a student who's obviously a dreamer. He's highly creative. You know, for an engineer, you know, he, he obviously has has a way with words. He's an exceptionally talented writer. So this, this is a student who really has the full package. And, you know, you could see him easily contributing to, to classroom discussions. You know, this is the type of thoughtfulness that really drives innovation that, that UT looks for, for, uh, you know, their undergraduate researchers. So let's let's glance through, glance through the resume here, see if there's anything that we missed. Looks like, again, kind of reasserting that he's taken a lot of strong coursework. We have kind of band, um, you know, reinforcing some of the community service. So, again, the, the, this application is really being par you know, carried through with the essays. So re reviewers will never go back and reread an entire application, but certainly whenever they, they encounter something like this where there's essays that are pretty unorthodox, quite creative, they might go back and, you know, read through and kind of connect some more of the dots and kind of skim through to see if there's anything else. You know, again, birds are another metaphor for heaven. So as even as metaphors between the essays are coming together, so this is an applicant who is really integrating his application and putting forward a, a highly compelling argument that he deserves his face in his first choice major. You know, this is the type of student you think would just be, you know, you'd be fun to have a conversation with. Um, this happened to me a lot where you read review applications like, man, like, I wonder, I just, I'd love to meet this student. And I think this is the impression, you know, a lot of reviewers would have. Certainly, if I got these essays, I would probably, you know, share them with some of my colleagues and say, like, hey, you really got to read some of these, some of these essays. Or if I was having an essay workshop, you know, these, these would certainly be textbook examples to show students of, you know, like, like great essays that help a student get into a university. Because this is an applicant who's, whose resume is above average, but you don't really see any of these, you know, deep research experiences or, or direct ties to engineering. And so just on the resume alone, he's probably a solid four, but these essays are, are certainly what elevates this student um, to, to an outstanding level. So well-rounded applicant, strong commitment to band, you know, good sampling of other activities to demonstrate he's well-rounded. Essays are obviously going to be the strong suit here. Uh, many hundreds of students write about band, and it wouldn't be surprising to me at all if this is the best uh, essay about band that, uh, that the app, or the reviewer would read, or even during an admissions presentation, if a family were to ask, like, hey, like, what's the coolest essay you've read? You know, I could easily see or their, their admissions reviewer say, yeah, there's this one, like, crazy essay about band, you know, and birds, and kind of hard to explain, but but you can really see the ingenuity that this, that this student has. You know, put forward. So I think this is this is a pretty solid five. You know, I think I would even if I was in a particularly good mood, or if I just read like a number of pretty boring applications, I might I might be inclined to reward this student with a six. Um, I think in practice, the student probably did receive a five. There might be some people that are kind of turned off by the unorthodox approach, but I couldn't see anyone giving him a less than a less than a four. So, you know, even for for full disclosure, so the student did get get accepted to the Cockrell School of Engineering, and you know, his, his first drafts, you know, I worked together with the student pretty closely, and his first drafts, you know, started with these kinds of metaphors, especially in the SAC was where it began, and we started talking about, you know, kind of having a larger vision for his application, and, you know, eventually, we, you know, we talked about just kind of, you know, shooting for a home run, or like just really throwing a Hail Mary and seeing what happens, recognizing that, you know, he would really need a strong score to, to counteract his, his, his strong but not exceptional resume, um, you know, to, to continue building on that rank and test scores. And, you know, this is a student who just really went, went for it. You know, that this is a, a highly unorthodox, a very creative essay. You know, these are essays that would be, you know, compelling reading, not just for a college application, but, you know, even for a popular blog post. You know, this, you know, he's writing at a level that, that would be more appropriate even for graduate school, you know, you know, students who are applying for, for, for advanced studies. And, you know, so for that reason, you know, this is a student that UT would really want on their campus. And, and for that reason would certainly be rewarded with a five and, I think it's even possible for a six. You know, even the criteria for a six says you don't have to, you know, be some outstanding national champion. But if you, you know, maximize the resources in your environment, demonstrate a deep commitment to one activity, you know, it's, it's very possible that a reward or a viewer could, could, could give this student a six. And I think on a certain day, I'd probably be inclined to give him a six too.